So this is an ultraviolet torch and what it does is it causes certain objects to glow or fluoresce. So I've got my Lego power station here and it makes the flames glow really nicely. I also found when I shone this light around my office that if I looked at things like the moon, you know, that really does glow very nicely. White objects often fluoresce quite nicely. What also fluoresces are things like highlighters. So this is just a normal highlighter pen and if I draw on my hand, uh, we can see quite clearly the way that that uh, kind of fluoresces. It's beautiful. But something else that also fluoresces is tonic water. So this is the kind of thing that people have with gin and tonic. And because of the quinine inside it, it fluoresces under ultraviolet light. And there's a really nice demonstration that if you make some ice cubes out of this tonic water, you can then put them into normal water to see what happens. So this is my special glowing tonic ice cube. I'm just gonna put it into the water and then look very carefully to see what happens. So why is it that that colder liquid went down? Well, I'm just gonna represent the particles with these bits of Lego. Now these are the particles in a fluid and a fluid can either be a gas or a liquid and that means that the particles are free to move around. Now at, uh, you've got to imagine that um, these things are all slightly jiggling so the hotter they are the more they vibrate and when they're colder they don't vibrate as much. Now let's imagine that these particles here suddenly get a bit colder than the others. Now you've got to remember that the particles don't change in size, but if they're getting colder, that means they're not going to be vibrating as much, and that means that the particles get a little bit closer together. Uh, because, you know, things expand when they get hotter. Now, because these particles here, they're closer together than these ones over here, that means that these have got a higher density. Now density is just the amount of mass per unit volume. So effectively, even though the particles stay the same size, they get closer together and that means that the overall density of this part here is higher than this density. And what that means is then the denser uh, region of this fluid then moves down and then the, the, I guess that, that their space is taken by the particles which are a bit warmer. So this is called convection. Now we might have, or you might have done a practical at school where you maybe get some potassium permanganate uh, and that's just to dye the water. So you can actually see the way that the water is moving just as we use the quinine in that tonic water which fluoresced to show the movement of that liquid. Now it might be more conventional to see uh, convection being things moving up. So maybe over here we were to heat up the bottom of this fluid as things heat up. Uh, that means that they vibrate more. Um, that means the particles spread out. Again, the particles stay the same size, but when they spread out, that means their average or overall density decreases, and then the particles move up. And sometimes what you get is a bit of a system going on, where you maybe have hot particles, or the, the particles which uh, had a higher temperature moving up on one side, and then the cooler particles moving down. And what you then have is a convection current. So hopefully uh, this rather simple model, where I've just used Lego to represent the particles in a fluid, this maybe explains how convection happens. When the particles get cooler, uh, they vibrate less, they take up less space compared to the other ones over here. That means the density of this region increases and that's why it then moves down, which is what we saw in that small demonstration at the start of the video.